The shoe we will be going through today was inspired by none other than the Looney Tunes character Bugs Bunny. Welcome back to my channel, Shea TV. My name is Marissa Hill. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as give this video a thumbs up at the end if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to hit that notification so we can alert you as soon as we have a new and upcoming video, as well as feel free to leave a comment at the end, guys. We love your comments. So let's get into the shoe we're going to be going through today. As I mentioned, this colorway was inspired by the iconic Bugs Bunny character. This is the Air Jordan 6 Retro Hairs. And I am so excited to go through this colorway because it's definitely a new colorway that I'm adding to my shoe collection that I have not seen before. And I just think that they did a great job with this. So let's get to it. Definitely gonna show you some images of the box because it has an amazing carrot on top, which is very representative of Bugs Bunny. He has always continuously been seen eating and holding a carrot at all times almost, as well as some nice colorful uh, paper that was, was boxed inside or packaged in the box. So let's get into our different chapters before we start talking about the shoe. As I mentioned to you new viewers out there, my videos are set up in chapter selection, so you can go through and choose which chapter you wanna see, but I do highly recommend watching this video from start to finish. So first up, we're gonna go through and discuss this specific silhouette. Next up, we are going to go through the history. So I'm gonna get more into that Bugs Bunny character, as well as some history on Michael Jordan in this specific shoe. Then we're gonna get into sizing. For those of you who do not know, this did launch in family sizing. And then we're gonna follow that up with a nice styling section so you guys can see how these shoes really pop outside in a more lifestyle setting. And then I'm going to close this off with the resale on these shoes. So either if you're interested in selling these shoes and making some money on it, or if you may be just interested in purchasing these because you weren't able to cop them when they were released, definitely stick around for that section. So let's get into it. Uh, today, once again, as I mentioned, these are the Air Jordan 6 Retro Hairs. We are going to go through the silhouette and see what the shoe is all about. So these, this specific silhouette is definitely known for infrared, and I'm definitely seeing nice hints of that infrared here on the portion of the bottom of the sole here. We've got some stuff on it. These are brand new, but they're already slightly dirty. And we've got this nice white foam midsole going on here and the infrared wrapping around that nice air bubble that we can see through. And then we've got some beautiful overlays going on here. This is very representative of Bugs Bunny's body. So he's gray and white, and I think they did a great job with having these this suede underlay of light gray which matches him perfectly and then we've got this nice kind of white leather that's on top of the underlays of the gray so we've got some nice overlays of white leather going and mixing in to match and mimic Bugs Bunny's character and then now we've got this nice lace lock. As I mentioned before, the Jordan 5 silhouette was the first Jordan to have a lace lock system. Looks like Tinker continued with that same lace lock system on the 6. And what I love about this lace lock, if you can see, it actually mimics the coloring of a carrot. And that works perfect with Bugs Bunny's character. So we've got this nice orange with the Jumpman logo on the front, which is red. And then we've got a nice green for that push button on top of that pull tab. I know a lot of people have talked about whether or not they can actually take these lace locks off. You are able to do that. So if you do not like the lace locks on your shoes, you are more than able to take these lace lock systems off. The reason that Tinker had designed the lace lock and put them on specific silhouettes was to basically make the shoe become more tailored to your foot and to hold it in place. And so though this is aesthetically pleasing as well to add some different color 
color variations. The main reason for this lace lock system was to basically keep your foot more stabilized inside of the shoe. Now we are going to look at the tongue here. So we've got some nice neoprene going on here and that nice red color. We've got some almost satiny looking shiny red here with an embroidered black Jumpman logo on the front of that tongue. So that's a nice little neoprene sleeve that they've given us. Now that I'm looking up at the top of the tongue, we can see that this is actually a rubberized tongue with two little holes here on the front of that tongue. And the reason why there are these two kind of holes in the top of this tongue here is because Jordan had expressed to Tinker that he had some issues with the first five Jordans that were launched with being able to get in and out of the shoes. So Tinker designed this specific silhouette to make him a more simplified shoe so that he was able to take it on and off in an easier way. So that's why he added the two holes in the front of, the, of this pull tab here. And then on the back, the heel tab, he basically mimicked this heel tab off of the spoiler on the rear of sports cars. And so that's why you kind of got this sporty look. And this is actually the first silhouette that Tinker basically kind of mimicked the shoe off of a more sporty type of automobile, specifically Jordan's Sportster German car. And so this was definitely not the last silhouette that was inspired by sports vehicles. Tinker then decided to design other shoes off of sports vehicles as well, but this was definitely the beginning of those designs and structures. So that's why we've got this nice kind of big heel tap in the back, as well as Michael did express that he didn't want the heel tap to hit his Achilles tendon. And so this was actually the first Jordan silhouette where it has this molding at the back of the heel. Now that I'm looking at the insole, it's inside the insole, it's got this nice white Jumpman logo in there. And we've definitely got that hair pattern on the inside and the hair pattern that shows through this translucent rubberized film that overlays it. So definitely uh, we've seen the hair pattern before, but not in a specific silhouette. We've seen it on the Air Jordan 1, as well as the Air Jordan 7. And it was very much so a very saturated kind of mosaic coloring pattern. This is definitely much more subdued based on the fact that, you know, they put this translucent kind of rubberized film on top of that. So, you, you know, it's not as vibrant for you to see it, but it is definitely there. And definitely that mosaic kind of patterning is on the insole of the shoe. On the collar, we've got just a simple black tone here. And on the back, we've got this nice purple embroidered Air Jordan Jumpman logo here that says Air. And then we've got some nice, just clean, simple white laces for the shoe. All right, let's get down to the bottom of the shoe here. We've got, again, that purple Jumpman logo, as well as that infrared matched with hints of this green and white. Definitely a very colorful shoe that I think they did a great job with, you know, just really making this a bunny like type of shoe. With this lace lock, uh, I just want to go back because there's actually a snap closure on here to hold that in place on this specific shoe, which is quite interesting. So that'll lock the lace lock system in place, as well as there are a lot of perforated paneling on both the medial and lateral side of the shoe. And so this shoe also has some perforated areas as well on the tongue, which is going to allow you plenty of breathability. There's really not many areas on the shoe that has not been perforated. It's all over as I'm looking on both sides of this. So Tinker definitely perfected the two different items of having a good performance shoe as well as having a very appealing aesthetic shoe. He did a great job with this. So definitely a shoe that can be worn on and off the court. Great job. That was the portion of the unboxing. So now we're going to move on and get into some history on the shoe. All right, let's get into the history portion of the video. So 
As I mentioned earlier, Bugs Bunny played a huge role in Jordan's history. And so going back, this specific hair colorway was actually on a pair of Air Jordan 7s that Bugs Bunny was seen putting on in a commercial that he was on with Jordan. And it kind of just paved this way for the dynamic duo to kind of team up and become very present within the Jordan brand. What's all the racket? You want some? I was only kidding. Gruesome, ain't it? Oh, this means war. Hey, Jordan. And, hey, Jordan. What'd you expect? Am my fight? This could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. That's all, folks. Well, that's my line. So for me, you know, I really look back and think of Space Jam and how the Looney Tunes became such a huge part of the Air Jordan line. I mean, no game. I don't hear it. What is it? Come on. Hey, come on. Look who's finally ready to play. And specifically in Space Jam as well, you see all the characters wearing different pairs of Nikes, including different types of Jordans. And in that specific commercial, Bugs Bunny was seen actually putting on a pair of Air Jordan 7s in the hair colorway, which is very cool looking back to see how this has, you know, really become a specific colorway that is still in the modern day and time being used on different shoes. So thank you, Bugs Bunny. I will forever remember you as a great marketing tool for the Jordan brand. And then also, if we look back at Spike Lee's character, Black Mon, he was seen in a commercial that I just actually watched again, it's hilarious, where he's asking a genie for a wish and you know he's basically trying to think of something that would be a great wish and of course he is seen putting on this specific silhouette when the genie makes him play like michael jordan lamp. i am the genie of the lamp i'm granting you just one wish which i wish for do you know do you know do you know a million dollars nah tax problem a new car can't drive I got it. A wop ba ba loo ma la bam boom Look, Mom, I can fly. I like that, Jeannie. I am the greatest! And so this specific shoe is very iconic. And the reason that it is so iconic is because of all the different goals and milestones that Jordan hit while he was wearing this specific shoe. And so in the regular season, Jordan uh, took home the league's scoring title of 31.5 points per game, which is insane if you think about it. I'm like thinking back to my basketball days. Oh my God, if I could have averaged 31.5 points per game, oh my God, I would have been such an all-star. But I mean, it's just like crazy to think that somebody who's human-like, it's almost like he's not even human. It's like not mortal you know he was able to set these crazy records and you know it wasn't actually until his postseason where he helped the Bulls basically enter into the championships and they were up against Lakers some big names like Michael Johnson or sorry Michael Johnson Magic Johnson and uh, he literally won his first championship in the NBA wearing the black infrareds. And so when you're thinking about history and tying that history into a silhouette, this shoe is so iconic because it was his first ever NBA championship, not to mention he won the MVP award. And so he really set some huge milestones wearing you know this specific shoe and i think a lot of people when they put this shoe on they really go back and they think about those moments that jordan had paved the way for while wearing this specific shoe and also back then there were five different colorways that had been released and we saw obviously the two white and black infrareds which were most well known 
as well as the Carmine that was also pretty popular. And then we also saw it in a maroon colorway as well as a blue colorway, which were less popular, but those were kind of the OG colors. And now we're starting to see, you know, this transition into a lot more diverse colors as we see here with the hairs. And as far as, you know, the history of this shoe, Tinker and Nike kind of met together after creating the shoe and uh, decided after the specific six was created that they were no longer going to use the Nike Air logo on the back. So they started adding the Jumpman logo to newer silhouettes. And that's why we're also seeing the Jumpman logo on this as opposed to the Nike Air logo. And that was because they wanted to distinguish it as a different entity from the Nike basketball line. So they wanted to have the Jordan line and then they wanted to separate that into the Nike basketball lines. So that was actually the last time we had seen this air bubble where you could actually see the air unit on a shoe. We didn't see this again till the Air Jordan 16. And that was because the air bubble unit that was visible was also seen on some other Nike silhouettes. They wanted to differentiate the two, which is quite interesting. And then as well as this is the high top version in the silhouette, but in 2002, quite some time later after the silhouette was created, they created a low top in this specific silhouette. All right, that is the history portion for today. Now we're gonna move on and get into sizing. This specific silhouette was launched in family sizing, which is awesome because you can get this shoe for the entire family if you want. And for me specifically, I got my sizing in a 7.5, but I also ordered it in a size eight because I was unsure of how the shoe was gonna fit. I would definitely say that this shoe is true to size, so I wouldn't go half size up or half size down. The size eight is a bit too large for me, even if I'm wearing a thicker sock. So I'm definitely happy with that 7.5 selection, which translates to a woman's nine, as well as grade school sizing. We have toddler sizing in these shoes. So definitely would be a cool addition to having your entire family in all of these, or having them all in the same silhouette. But uh, other than that, I would say, you know, definitely thanks to Tinker for creating all of these different pull tabs on the shoe because it definitely helps with getting your foot in and out of it very well. Okay, so that's for the sizing portion. We're now going to move into the styling section. So definitely took these shoes out to be kind of presented in front of some colorful walls. And the first look that I chose was a heart wall. And the reason I kind of chose some very graphic backgrounds is because I feel like the hairs definitely with their mosaic kind of intricate patterns that they have really pop when they're around bold colors. And so I paired that with a Topshop leopard print dress. I think these shoes are just very loud, but also slightly subdued. So definitely you're able to mix and match them, I feel like, with lots of different prints. And I think leopard print just really worked well with this specific colorway. I mean, definitely allowed these shoes to kind of have, you know, their own specific subdued look to kind of give my outfit more of a louder kind of voice. But uh, the white and the grays are just a pretty neutral colorway that really I think went well. And I also just think that reds go really well with specific leopard cheetah prints too. So that was the first look. Next up, we did a second look with a Nirvana t-shirt and I paired that with some Alexander Wang just kind of boxy oversized denim pants and a lighter shade. I feel like these are very kind of retro in their colorway. And so that's kind of why I decided to go with a lighter tone denim. But I definitely think no matter what style of denim, even if it's a skinny fit or you have just a cropped fit, these shoes are definitely going to work well with any type of silhouette as far as jeans go. And so, um, the t-shirt the as well, I just chose a basic white and black t-shirt. As I see on the shoe, you know, you've got some nice white and blacks that really mimic that t-shirt colorway that I went with. And all together, it was just a very casual lifestyle look. And I shot that in front of a very vibrant wall just to kind of show you how 
these colors do come off when you have a pop of color behind you. And the last look was more of an athletic look that I chose. So those are some basic black uh, yoga pants that I got from Victoria's Secret. And they're kind of a little modern with a little translucent see-through pattern blocking on the sides of them. And I just paired that with a black tank top because as you guys know, I love black and am always seen in black. I only work in black and sometimes very, very dark gray. <laughs> and so I just think, you know, an all black outfit is definitely going to pair very well okay, with these sneakers. Yeah. And this is also an athletic shoe, you obviously. Know. So it's meant for the court, but not meaning that you can only wear it on the court. These are definitely have been seen in a more lifestyle setting. So that's why I gave you that athletic kind of style for the last look. All right, that was for the styling portion. Now we're gonna close that out with the resale on these shoes. So whether or not you're trying to resell this and make uh, some money off of this, or whether or not you were unable to cop the shoe and you're just looking to buy it on the resale market, this section is for you. So the shoes originally, back in 91, actually retailed at 125. And this is actually the first silhouette that went down in pricing years later to $120, which is pretty crazy. But unfortunately, that is not the case today. These shoes retailed at $190. So a little bit pricier than what they were going for years ago. Uh, but as far as the sizing goes for resale, it's between $230 to $350. Once again, I like to say that these numbers can and will change at times depending on when you see this video. Uh, but for now, a four, a size four to six and a half and a size 16 are the highest resale price point shoes right now. And those are going around $350. So you're definitely going to make a little bit of money if you do have shoes in those sizing ranges. But other than that, other sizes are definitely averaging between 230 to 350. So depending on, of course, the sizing will depend on how much money you will make in that resale market. As far as purchasing these, uh, I definitely think that it is not too far out of your range if you do want to pot pay out of pocket for a resale price point. Uh, other than that, I think that these shoes aren't actually doing that bad on the resale market. So there is a little bit of money to be made. And for anyone who is interested in purchasing these shoes on the resale market, as always, I like to mention that in my description box down below, you can find all the affiliate links needed in order to find these shoes. As always, I mentioned that it does help this channel. It does support it if you use those affiliate links. So feel free to go and away and click on those links to find this shoe. All right, guys, thanks again for tuning in to another one of my unboxings. I always appreciate you guys stopping by and watching my channel. As always, if you're new to this channel, do not forget to hit that subscribe button as well as leave me comments. Do you guys have any questions about the shoe? Let me know if you have any sizing questions, if you were able to cop this shoe, what your thoughts are on the shoe. Do you like it or is it a pass for you? As well as don't forget to hit that notification button so that we can let you guys know as soon as we have some new updated videos coming out. So until next time, everyone, we will see you then.